I hope you don't wait to give me roses Please don't take too long to think that you should know me Please, for real Please don't wait too long to tell me I'm the shit show See you flourish, looking salty, throwing fits, yo Then you bury, getting lonely, wanna miss yo Get from Rami, you clowny, you looking needy Welcome to another episode of Opinionated Facts I'm your host Drizzle Today we got another special guest in the building, my girl Shasha Renee. What's going on? Not much. It's, it's just it's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. But uh, how you doing? You good? I'm good, man. I, I really can't complain. Blessed. Okay. Okay. So let's uh let's talk about this flavor EP. Uh, and when I listen to it, I, I can I get a lot of you know samples. I can hear the samples in and everything. So. What kind of artist would you would you say you are? Um, you know, really in the past, I've been more so like a, a heavy hip hop soul artist, um, and you still hear um, hip hop soul, very lyrical. You know what I'm saying? But with Flavor, um, we wanted to do something different, so we wanted to make it more fun, uh, more animated. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and sprinkle that the color and the swag in there. Mm-hmm. So you know, that's really what you know um, Flavor was about. I was very playful. If I could say that, like, okay, yeah, very I playful tell that. with the lyrics, you I know what I'm saying, that. sexy even a lot of times, uh, but always real, you know what I'm saying. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, uh, now, who is Wops World? Because I see that it's 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 not just your EP; it's also it's you. Yes. Shots Renee and Wops World. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I, I definitely wanted to do a project where there was a uniform sound, and I just worked with just one producer. Um, and WAP has been somebody who I loved and respected on the scene for a long time. He's an artist in addition to being a producer. So he produced the entire project project um, in addition to being on the OTW record. So, I mean, we just vibe. Like, he just kept shooting me beats, shooting me instrumentals. I would go through them, listen to them, and I would pick and I would put them to the side for the album. You know what I'm saying? And then I might hit him up and be like, yo, I came up with something on this record. Mm-hmm. And he might hit me up and do the same thing and be like, yo, I want you to hear this hook that I came up with for this, this, and that. So we just worked it out like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And speaking of uh, samples, uh, I got to give you props for having my, my dog on there. I don't know, bro, but uh, you had a clip of my man's uh, Mr. Hotspot on Yes. There. <laughs> That's one of my favorite. <laughs> Internet personality dudes, I think he's hilarious, man. I, I, I love his energy. So when I when I heard, that, I said, right, yes, I fuck, I fucks with this. Uh, what's that? The uh, the beautiful record. Yes, I fuck yes, with yes, that, so absolutely, man. A lot of people, and I'm glad that you knew who that was, because a lot of people be like, who is that? Yeah. And I'm like, man, that's it's, Mr. Hospital. Yeah. I'm thinking everybody gonna know. Yeah, you, you, know, you as think that? Mr. Hot Spot is, you, you know, you're beautiful, you know, you know who he is. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, him, yeah. So, but yeah, nah, I, I, I call him that, so okay, yeah, it's dope. Um, so, was that the only project that you came out with last year? Yes. With the Flavor EP? Yeah, and that's the last project I released since 2017. So, so why so long of a still- break? You know, that's really how I operate with, with like whole projects. You know, I did release singles throughout 2018. My City uh, was the biggest record I was pushing, which ended up being on the Flavor um, EP mm-hmm. and everything. But, uh, nah, man, it takes time. You know what I'm saying? If I was just going to drop like a mixtape or something like that, uh, it would really be different because I can just grab industry beats. I can take some beats. Um, and, and just do whatever I want with it. When you're doing a whole album, you know what I'm saying? It's just a whole different process. It's all original music. You know, you, it, it takes time to, to get that stuff worked out to do it the right way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it just took time. Like, the, the music was all recorded between the end of 2017 and the beginning of 2019. So the music was recorded over two years and then put together an album. So that's how long it took. You know, I wasn't really pressing it. Now, do you have a project coming out in 2020? Or are you just going to take a step back, focus on some singles? And- um, right now, I'm still pushing flavor, you okay. know. And that's another thing. So I released that project in 2017, and really, I was still promoting it, you know what I'm saying? Up until maybe like the last five or six months before I released flavor, I was just continuously promoting that music, you know what I'm saying? As an independent artist, um, you know, so many people, most people, have not heard my music you know yeah. most people listen to hip-hop in general haven't heard who Sasha Renee is so I just think it's very important to take time to to keep promoting your music you know I went on a flavor tour um, during the summer in the fall uh, of last year promoting the project and I'm gonna do that again in, you know this summer 
you know what I'm saying? And I, I, I the music is still new to so many people. Yeah. So, you know, even though I know my fans here in the city and, you know, Kentucky and the, the fans I've accumulated over the years in other places want to hear new music, but really I got to focus on just continuing to pr push flavor and trying to get that to the right people, you know what I'm saying? So. Okay. Now, where did you go on tour at? Oh, man. Uh, shoot, we went to St. Louis twice, Atlanta three times. Um, where else did we go? I just came back from Kansas City. Um so many cities. Lexington did a show at uh, Cosmo Charlie's down there. Okay. Uh, we did a huge show here in Louisville uh, for the tour. Where else did we go? Oh, New York twice. I almost forgot. Okay. <laughs> we did New York twice. Uh, had a show in Long Island, and I got some mad connections up there. Um, I'm trying to think where else. Make sure I ain't leaving that. Nashville. I did Nashville twice. Um, I think that's it. Now this time around, you gonna do those same cities, or are you gonna? Um, you know, I, I have solid connections in those cities where mm -hmm. I could get another show easily, but we're really trying to branch off and, and do some other places. So definitely thinking Cincinnati, Indianapolis uh, this time around, um, Chicago, Houston, uh, and Charlotte. So okay, okay, that's dope. Now that's that's a lot of for an independent artist. You know, that's that's a broad amount of cities that you went to you've been up north you've been midwest you've been down south so where where would you say is probably the most receptive crowd to your music outside of you know louisville and kentucky you know lexington like when you go out of state where is it most you get the most love you feel at right now i felt like the love in new york was like the biggest crowd was Kansas City. It was about 150 to 200 people. Um, so even though the New York crowds for both shows were a lot smaller, just the overwhelming the amount of like pretty much almost every person in the space wanted to walk up to me and talk to me, have a conversation and tell me that they like the music. Those people still to this day are actively following me on my social media accounts and I'll be seeing it like, that's the homie I met up in New York, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, definitely New York, they loved it, man. They they really loved the vibe, they loved the energy, they loved the stage performance. So I would definitely say New York and then um, Atlanta always rocks with me too. Okay, now would you say that your music is the reason why New York gravitate so heavily to your energy musically is probably because of the the type of artist you are you're more of a i don't want to say a hip-hop purist but i, I definitely that think that up north um they really respect and gravitate towards lyrics the most mm -hmm. from what i've experienced um and then you also get people really respecting and, and loving lyricism a lot in the midwest so you know definitely people here in the city love it lex love it uh, but New York, it was just through and through. They was like, yeah, like that's what we wanted to hear. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's dope. Excuse me. So, on the, uh, on the Flavor EP, one thing that I noticed was you didn't have, you had features outside of WAP. Outside of WAP's world, you had a feature, you had a Corey Black and... I'm trying to, I can't remember the other name. On the other Baron one. Lee and Jordan Jesse. Baron Lee. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So on your, I know you still pushing flavor, but for your next project, are you gonna, are you gonna be more focused on just being more of a, just a solo artist with no no features on the project? Are you still gonna, you know, do the feature? Thing? Man, I'm definitely still gonna do features. It's just so many more artists here in the city and now beyond that I want to work with. Um, but I, I, I don't like to oversaturate with features. Mm -hmm. I definitely want to shine on a project. I want most of the tracks to, to be solo songs. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely, probably the same format. You know, if I go 10 to 15 tracks deep, you can expect at least four or five of them to have features. Okay. Yeah, so. okay. Next time I do an album, you know, uh, Flavor was really an EP. We kept it, you know, right at 10 tracks so yeah. we could call it an EP. Um, but next time, I'm just going to do a full studio album. So what what got you into making music? What got you into rap? It's just always been a thing. Like I, I grew up in a household where my mom and my daddy was just always bumping music like all the time. You know what I'm saying? And I fell in love with it at a young age. Um, and I just remember like wanting to be just like the people that I was watching on MTV. Like I used to just sit there like and daydream as a kid like all the time and see myself like being on stage. You yeah. know, doing the same thing. So. 
Um, I remember when I was 10, that was the first time I just sat there and wrote a song. I was at the school one day, I was just chilling. I just sat there and I didn't even have a beat. It was a beat in my head. Yeah. And I just wrote a song. I had my little brother um, who still raps and stuff too. So, you know, we would make songs together as kids. And, you know, I did it throughout middle school and high school. You know, people can tell you, like, they, they knew I rapped. I wasn't ever, like, diving into it, though. Like, I see a lot of the kids now and I wish I had the knowledge and the resources back then to really just hop in it and be in the studio actually creating music. Yeah. I didn't do that till I got in college. I was 19 when I recorded my first record. So, you know, it's just always been a thing, you know, and I started pursuing it. After I heard myself on, on wax, I was like, <laughs> okay, you know, this is this is what I want to do. Okay. Yeah. So who, is, who, who, are your, who are your biggest um, influences musically? Uh, Nas, Erykah Badu, Lauryn Hill. Just them three coming up, a little bit of Jay-Z, but them three, you know, coming up with my favorite three artists, and I just love their music, and that's how I really got that that strong hip hop so vibe I think early on when I started creating. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, now, I I gotta ask a question. So mm -hmm. okay, well so apparently you're a you're a Nas fan. Yeah. I like I'm a Jay Z fan. Okay. So I like I mean I like yeah, both. Yeah, you, know? you like both. <laughs> I, see I couldn't when I was you know, I I had to pick a side, you know, when Absolutely. growing up I was like, well, I gotta pick <laughs> Ended up gravitating towards Hove, which, but I always, I always gave Nas his credit. Like he, like storytelling, rapping, and I think, I think younger, the younger me, fell in love with the Jay Z side. It was a little more flashier. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was a little more. Yeah. It was, it was easier for me to, I see that, so mm -hmm. I like that, you know. But as I got older, I'm like, ah, oh, I can, I can, I can. Like, now I can picture what Nas is rapping. You know what I'm saying? When I was young, I really couldn't picture this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And as I got older, so as an as a older person, I started to appreciate Nas as a as a rapper and as a lyricist. And we don't, we don't get that nowadays. Like, usually usually artists coming up now, they don't really... Artists like Jay-Z and Nas, they don't... Yeah. They don't... They, that's not their influences. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you'd be surprised that a 20-year-old is influenced by 50 Cent, you'd be like, you know who 50 is? Like, really? I think you'd be influenced by Drake or, or Wayne or something. I'm not saying you, but I'm saying yeah. just, you know what I'm saying, so the generational gap. Um, I think it just depends on when you, you know, felt influenced, you know what yeah. I'm saying, at what period in your life. Was you six? Was you 16? You know what I'm saying? I think right. it just all depends, but it's funny because, like, the opposite happened for me. Like, now I have so much more of appreciation for Jay-Z. Like, Back when I was a teenager, you couldn't tell me nothing. I'm like, mm. like he's, <laughs> he's, he's dope or whatever, but yeah. he nothing compared to Nas. Yeah. And now, like, I have a whole different perspective, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I used to discredit, like, artists that were too flashy, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And now I understand it from, you know, a different standpoint. Like, everything ain't got to be serious. Like, I just, I view hip-hop in a different light than I used to view it, so. Okay. Yeah. So how, so how do you view the, the, the Louisville music scene right now? Because it's blossoming. It's blossoming like crazy right now like i feel like everywhere you turn and look it's somebody else is, is getting a look somebody else getting some shine somebody's getting some love like how do you feel about the, the little music scene right now i think it's huge i mean like i don't i mean what city you know other than those mega hubs like you know atlanta and, and new york and la and stuff like that like have so many young stars coming up in the industry right now you know what i'm saying like it goes without being said to say bryson tiller and jack carlo but then you got 2k baby who just got uh, a big deal you know what i'm saying and then you got artists like like marky that are booming you got uh mars in the studio right next to legendary timbo making tracks you know what i'm saying you got um uh, who'd i say i said marky blazing you know what I'm saying? Uh, with his deal and all the followers and stuff that he's had, like, the scene's just booming to me, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Like, we might not still have um, everybody on board as far as the fans and listeners within the city, but yeah. you got to understand, outside of here, people got the scope on us. Mm -hmm. They really do. Like, um, I run an open mic every Thursday, the Louisville Vibe, down in Nirvana. And uh, for the last five or six weeks, every every single week, there have been A&Rs there. They're here. Yeah. 
they're now scouting talent in Louisville because they they've heard and they found out there's something going on there in Kentucky. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's just so many of us that are that are talented and ready for the next level. So I'm excited about Louisville music for real. That's dope. Yeah. Now, are you? See, a lot of times when people are like making music, so you have a, a person who get into music just because they're they're good at it and they have a passion for it, but their end game is like, nah, I want to be, I want to be an executive. You know what I'm saying? So, like for you, do you you strictly you just want to be an artist, or do you want to eventually get to the point where you got your own your own, I guess, label and you got your own artist and you stepping into that more executive role down the line? I mean, uh, I'm a business person, you know what I'm saying? So I definitely want to make a living from this. And I think being a female artist, um, based on what I've seen in hip hop, my career may be shorter lived, especially being 28 and still being on this level. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when I do pop and when I do make it, you know, I might have a good five to 10 solid years of being accepted as, as making an artist on the forefront after that. How am I going to continue to make my dust? You know what I'm saying? How am I going to continue to be in the industry and not have to just go home and settle down? Yeah. And and that's exactly what I see. I've always been that person that's wanted to put on other artists. Um, having a record label would be dope, would be amazing. Um, you know, sitting back and maybe learning how to do this stuff here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like producing <laughs> and engineering and maybe owning a studio and opening several studios and just making sure that I give back at that point. So that's definitely like, it's not um, anything that I'm planning for right now, but when I think about like long term, what would I be doing? Like something like that would be amazing for sure. Okay. Which it also brings me to my next question. Um, I, I, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before, but it might have been last year. Yeah, I think it was last year, last summer. There was a huge, a lot of female artists were popping up. Like, you, of course, you had the Cardi B's, and then you got the City Girls, and you got the the uh, eight. Was it is it Asian Asia Doll? Or, mm -hmm. uh, Cuban Doll. Yeah, Asian Cuban Doll. doll. You, got, you got the dolls. You, dolls. <laughs> you got you got the Doja Cats. Like you got all these female rappers and these female artists coming up, and there was a I don't want to call it, I guess a stigmatism with those type of artists you know and then you got an artist like Rhapsody who she's been around for years like mm -hmm. she's respected like if you a, if you a hip hop head you know you, you know Rhapsody you, you fuck with her you respect her you know she can rap she can hold her own with any dude in the booth you know what I'm saying you know that but there was a like she's not that type of artist as far as the Cardi B's and the dolls and all that type of stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, so like, how do you like, you like view like the, like the, I guess the, the, uh, the uh, discrepancies with the female artists as far as rap? Cause it's two sides. You got the lyricists of them, which is like the very, very small. And then the rest of them are the, you know, the Megs and all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think that's the difference between men and women. Like, you mm -hmm. know, female energy and masculine energy are just different in general. But, I mean, even in the male hip-hop lane, you have that. You have the lyricists. You know, you got your J. Cozy and Kendrick Lamar. And you got those cats. Mm -hmm. um, who's a new guy? Um, shoot, he just won the show. I can't think of his You're name. Talking D-Smoke. D-Smoke. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got D-Smokes and you got those cats in the industry but it's still a small conglomerate of them compared to all the turn up yeah, artists right. and the trap artists. So it's the same exact thing with the women's side. Like It's the same exact thing. That's that's popular music and hip-hop in general yeah. right now anyway. Um, so I love it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I guess the discrepancy or whatever, it doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. You know, I listen to Rhapsody. Um, I listen to Tierra Whack. Um, and those kind of artists who are hella lyrical and you know not all um, I guess you know they're not the club strip club anthem radio kind of twerk girl music like they're not making that stuff but it's still really good quality music um, you got Dreezy who does both, both who yeah. bounces back and forth and she's super dope um, you got your Des Loaf who, who's kind of more so like the pop lane but she can still spit and the stuff, original so. A Boogie yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. So you know, I love love Megan Thee Stallion. Like I love it, but yeah. you know, I just, I just love seeing the the female artists just bloom, yeah. blooming in the industry right now. Like really running the game. They really running it. Like yeah. since Cardi B, like 
really just came out and just and and yeah but she blew the top off she opened that door um uh, for for female rappers to be at the forefront you know the way that men were so i I rocks with it man i love the movement yeah no (laughs) it's dope i don't mind i'm I'm a cardi fan i would yeah me too like i love it i'm gonna say i'm a i'm a bardy but uh definitely (laughs) I'm definitely. I, Marty, I, I, you ain't Marty yeah, game. I, I I rock with Cardi, <laughs> man. She's yeah, she she's cool people's man. I, I like her. Definitely like her energy and everything. But uh, yeah, now the rise of few female artists since since she's. But I don't want to like. I remember. I know when she said this statement, people got yeah, mad they all at flipped her. Yeah, flipped out, but really it had yeah, a lot of truth to yeah, it. Yeah, it, it had like like not saying that she made female artists, but she kind of like opened it up, and it was like as soon as she got through the door it was like the floodgates open and yeah. you can't and you can't say that they did it because yeah, you can't it, deny that like of course women have been a part of hip-hop of course you've had the Nicki Minaj's who have completely boomed and had super super successful legendary careers you can't mm-hmm. take away from that but after Cardi now like literally you know you got Megan Thee Stallion is running the industry like when we look at social media, who do we see? We see the female rappers like they 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 on the radio, they in the top ten. You know what I'm saying? Like they really like at the forefront of the music scene right now. Yeah, no, that's a dope thing. Definitely yeah. a dope thing for sure. Now, uh, shit, you got any? You say you talked about. You say you got the tours coming up. Well, do you have any dates for those tours coming up? No, we don't got nothing set in stone. Um, we we working on a lot of stuff as far as like a big move and stuff coming up. Uh, me and my manager and my team and stuff so we kind of keep it quiet but um, I'm always doing shows out of town like I said I just came back from Kansas City Mm -hmm. Um, and we're trying to um, book some shows through Raw I'm a Raw artist I don't know if you're familiar with that organization Um, I just did a show in Lexington with So Far Sounds so I'm looking forward to doing some more shows with So Far Sounds Um, and then there's a um, showcase up in New York that I'm trying to get on right now Major Stage Y'all should look up Major Stage if you're artists. But uh, Major Stage up in New York, I think I'm about to do that. So just be looking for me to drop dates uh, for early to mid-March on my social media and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. You got any shout-outs? Shout-outs, man. Shout-out my manager, uh, Jessica. Shout-out my, my team, man, everybody who, who works closely with me. Uh, Shout-out Party All Weekend, my DJ, man. Shout-out I Am Royalty. Uh, that's my music affiliation camp and all of the artists uh, affiliated with I'm Royalty, man. Just love to, to the whole Louisville music scene, uh, Lex music scene, all my Lex babies, what's up? And everybody out there just doing their thing, man, supporting me. Salute. All right, well, shit, like I said, it was, I appreciate you for pulling up, knocking out this interview with me. Like I said, it's been a, a very, very long day. They show off the merch. I got merch, man. Flavor in year. Flavor, man. Make sure y'all hit me up for t-shirts. Uh, I got hats. I got wristbands. Sasha Renee Music wristbands, y'all. Hoodies. This is my brand as well. The My City brand. You know what I'm saying? So, shop. You know? Yeah, like I said, I appreciate you for pulling up. Chopping it up with me. Dope little interview. And, uh, shit. I look forward to seeing what you're coming up with next. Yeah. And uh, I know some people in New York, man. I, I can, I can, I can link you with uh, one of my homies in New York. He actually, he actually, he didn't make the intro for the show, but I tell you, I, I tell you right when we get done. But yeah, yeah <laughs> appreciate you pulling up and uh, yeah, link shit. me. We out. Sure. Yep. Kissing on her lips, I can turn her feet. She just got a petty, it's her birthday. We got on her birthday suit, so I'm a birthday freak. Study that body, girl, I'm a birthday geek. Feeling the bean, no, you can tell how I speak. Watch your Gianni, I smell like Versace. OTW to the VIP. OTW to a place for you and me. I'm OTW, you know that's how you wanna see ya. Got a bad little shorty, watch that. Kickstarter with you around the world.